and we're back for game number three. The interactive Philippines, they actually managed it in game number two to beat Team Mushi here after game one was very convincingly won by uh, the Team Gigabyte, Team Mushi. And yeah, we're going into game number three. My name is Hefla Moog, and coming with me is Coucher. You are here on Hefla TV, your English, German, and Chinese casting community. Either way, nice challenge here. It's nice that we can cast it, and I'm really looking forward to this game free. Yeah, I mean, it's always nice if a series goes to a game free, to be honest, as far as I'm concerned. And we'll see now if Interactive Philippines can kind of, kind of carry their momentum from game two. Of course, a lot of it always comes down to draft, but they go for the first pick, Tinker. And as always, I'm so skeptical about going for it as a first pick. It just gives so much time for Team Mushi now to react with their just own draft to try to counter the Tinker, for example. Yep, absolutely. And, well, we have to see. Interactive Philippines, they are like, hey guys, Tinker worked out last game, so why not go in for it? Never change the running system. Uh, apparently so, they decide to just go for it. And I hope this time Team Mushi has a better answer to the Tinker, because like even though they got the BKBs, they just didn't manage to get the Tinker down. Like they just found those pickups before big team fights started and even the global silence just didn't help them Mushi had quite some some stacks on his silencer but he never got really to that point where he could right click uh, properly a target especially then after also the interactive Philippine guys they they started to BKB up as well I mean in the end we had three BKBs on each team and that just made it impossible so no clay for wisdom no nothing coming out and well, <laughs> it was an interesting game to say the least. It it looked like they're holding on, but then yeah, the interactive Philippines they just got tower by tower, pick off by pick off, and then at the end they were out of buybacks, and that was just the end of the game. Either way, game three, Nix Assassin and Doom should bring it. You yeah, I mean definitely once again kind of a different start to the draft. I mean Doombringer of course is completely a standard pick, but the Nix Assassin not as much. It is decent dish against Tinker. Trying to scout him out with the Vendetta. And of course, Spike Carapace into the Masters of Machines can also be quite annoying for the Tinker. So, I don't mind that pick at all, to be honest. But, yeah. how do you think they're going to lane this? I mean, Doombringer usually is the off laner. So, is it going to be like Nix Assassin mid lane or just a support like he is mostly played as or used to be? Well, we have to see. With the third and fourth picks, we're definitely going to see this. But it is one distinct... Uh possibility but Sky it's Rathmage. it's been a while like to be honest it's been a while that I've seen many things here for example a BKB Earthshaker did we have a BKB Earthshaker in the TI even like I can't remember I mean I can't I, I'm pretty sure some core Earthshaker got BKB at some point yeah but the maximum one or two like I actually have to look at the stats after the games but like BKB Earthshaker that was a very interesting thing to see but sure why not he, in the end he had the money like why not like it saved you from the the global silence if it comes out so he was just casting through and didn't have to care about curse of the silent last word or anything like that so he got all his spells through it was an interesting choice but it worked out and that's that's the most important part talking about magical damage tinker and burst whatsoever there we have it sky of mage coming out again that's of course interesting the sky of mage is such um in the western scene we always see the sky of mage having a bit more impact these games, the Sky of Mages, they were, they were there. They also helped, obviously, but I didn't. It, they didn't feel so dominant. But still, like in the end, you also saw the Tinker, of course, benefiting from the seal, the burst damage there. Ethereal played Mystic Flare, all that. It's so much burst, and yeah, it worked out. Yeah, it, I mean, Sky of Mage, definitely. I will have to agree that he wasn't the flashiest. Or didn't have the flash flashiest of plays, at least in game number two. Some Mystic Flares, of course, helped blow up KYXY, for example, especially at the end. But the most of the dirty work was done by the other heroes, I think. Especially the Tinker, which has created so much space all around. But we'll see how well they can just combo it up together. I mean, just kind of Mage, together with any kind of magical burst hero, is always going to be nice. So Tinker and Skyrath, they definitely go well together. But secondary set of bands, Interactive Philippines taking out two core heroes, Faceless Void as well as the Death Prophet. Whereas Team Mushi, Team Gigabyte, banning out two supports, so just Rubik and Earthshaker. Yep, absolutely. It's I mean the Marana has been on Interactive Philippines side last game. 
and now we see it here for Team Mushi. We have to see though, does he get some sort of setup, anything like that? That's. I mean, we saw some Marana Fisher combination last game, but also a lot of arrows that didn't hit anything because there were a lot of fishing arrows. Let's see if if Team Mushi wants to make a bit, yeah, more secure. Like, I mean, there would be always the the traditional options like the Shadow Demon and the Bane, for example. But then again, they already have Nyx, they have Mirana, we have to see in what role this Mirana is being played. So we might not even see more than one support, for example, coming out. Yeah, we shall see how they want to go about this. I mean, from the last game, we already saw that Team Wushi, they definitely aren't afraid of just drafting a little bit differently, going for some other kind of strategies. But Interactive Philippines now, if they want to go for like a common support, Together with the Skyraft, they could have gone for a Wraith King, but nope, they pick up a Brewmaster now, which was completely ignored in the last game, I do believe. Of course, the Doombringer can somewhat counter the Brewmaster, and now with the Shadow Shaman also picked up. Actually, Team Gigabyte, they have so much lockdown to deal with the Brewmaster if need be. Yep, Shadow Shaman is coming out. Well, this gives at least some push into the whole mix here, but still, I'm... Um, well, Shadow Shaman... Shackles, Arrow, setup also for the Impale, might be interesting, you already talked about the Brewmaster, like if the Brewmaster gets a long Arrow followed up by Impale, followed up by Shackles or a Doom, that is of course bad news for the Brewmaster, that is really bad news for the Brewmaster because he needs to get it uh, through as such, but well, Die let's hunter. see, I mean for now, I'm, I'm still <laughs> having Interactive Philippines a bit favored because we have Tinker supported with the Scarab Mage. If the Tinker is getting similar farm like last game, he's going to have a huge impact again. We have a Pro Master that's hard to bring down the Brolings. We have a Tide Hunter now that is our offlane candidate. So a huge ultimate is coming out there as well. Maybe even getting that ultimate before the Nyx Assassin initiates. Shadow Shaman is something that falls to Ravage, Mystic Flare combination, for example, or any other damage by the Tinker. The only one who is tanky enough to get all through all this is then maybe a Doom later on in the game. So I don't know. Like right now, I, I favor a bit the Interactive Philippines draft. Yeah, I mean, I just really like the Tide Hunter as the fourth pick there. Just uh, a buffer together with the Brewmaster, especially between the Gigabyte side as well as the Tinker. The Tinker always just wants to be on the safe side, just rearm, heat ticking missiles, march at the machines. And the Tide Hunter and Brewmaster definitely should be able to just create that buffer between them. But with this now, the Tide Hunter, usually in the offlane, are we going to see something like a Tinker farm safe lane or Brewmaster, or might we even see a Brewmaster support here? That's also, it's been ages I've seen something like that. <laughs> I don't think so. I, mean, I think Brewmaster support isn't too bad. Of course, if it's with a Skyraph Mage, he might have some issues actually getting up close to get the Thunderclap, even with the Concussion Shot helping out with the slows. But we'll see how they want to lane this. With their last pick, we should be just kind of aware what they're going to go for. But Ember Spirit was the last pick from Gigabyte, so they actually have a lot of lockdown. Ember Spirit is extremely elusive, and Interactive Philippines, apart from the Ancient Seal at the moment and the Ravage, they actually don't have any proper lockdown. I guess Brewmaster, Boulder Toss maybe, but... I mean, this Ember Spirit was a pretty good pick, I think. Storm Spirit could have worked just as well, to be honest, but... And I, I think both teams so far have a rather solid lineup, but Interactive Philippines, they finish it with a Witch Doctor. So late game-wise, they're relying on the Tinker so much. Yep, absolutely. It's... It's, again, something that is completely based and circle around that Tinker. But with the Witch Dog, Promaster, Titan the holding them in place. There's not much interrupt on the on the Witch Dog if they secure it with the Ravage. I mean if they secure the area with the Ravage. So for me to be honest, this is I think it's all about how the Ravage comes into this game. Like if they have a go on the Titan to dooming him for example or taking him out then this is going to be a bad fight for Interactive Philippines, and I'm just talking 5-on-5 five five now here. But if they manage to get the Ravage up, then the Tinker going for burst damage, maybe bursting uh, Mirana, Shadow Shaman, as well as the Ember Spirit without, uh, for example, the Flame Guard. If they burst them down, 
the fights are going into interactive Philippines. So, to be honest, I think this game is all about initiation. Who gets it first? And the central wall will be around the tight hunter, in my opinion. But let's see if if I'm right with this one. Either way, we in introduce the teams again here. Nyx Assassin is now played by Ohio. In the mid we're gonna have Mushi on the Ember Spirit. He's claiming his mid position again from KYXY. KYXY is the one who's playing Morana now in a farming role. Then WTF is on the Doom. And last but not least we have Net here on the Shadow Shaman. And Net is an awesome Shadow Shaman player by the way. Like he has balls of steel when he plays that hero. Yeah he definitely is. But at the moment for Interactive Philippines they're gonna go in, Fox on the Brewmaster leading the charge, leaving Kolya to play the Witch Doctor, Che up on the Tinker with Emma Stone, he, I think he's replacing BG01 unless he just changed his name, but his portrait is different as well I think, but any, in any case, he's on the Skyrath Mage, and the last one for them is 4694 on the Tidehunter safe lane. Yep, absolutely, and they're still looking for something. Right now they're on a low crown, so maybe they are seen it's daytime, so Mushi sees them, and they don't have any initiation here. They might have a slow of the Sky of Mage and the Casket following up with the Thunderclap, but in the end they just didn't find anything, so they just head back to their lanes. They left one sentry board here, blocking that so the Doom can't take that big camp, and this will be a tri lane. In the mid we're gonna have to Tinker, obviously, and then solo. Uh, lanes will be Nyx Assassin versus Tight Hunter, which is a a pretty bad laning for a Tight Hunter if Ohio really leeches him out of mana. That's the bad news for a Tight Hunter because you need at least minimum mana to to get all the time the anchor smashes up. But without that, it might be an awkward lane. So Ohio should do fairly decent against the Tight Hunter. Let's see how it goes. Either way, game starts. Let's hop into it. Yeah, I, mean, I think the funniest thing at the moment, or the most weirdest thing is the WTF is actually going into the enemy jungle and weirdly enough it's probably the safest jungle to be in considering that interactive Philippines are going for an aggressive tri lane and yep. with this he might be able to even surprise 4694 the Thailand around this bottom lane here which is such a bad name to pronounce man or just say it out <laughs> Yeah, top. We actually had the Witch Dog starting here with the double damage run, of course, giving him a small advantage. Net went for the side pole, but this one is actually stolen. Oh, actually, the creeps are getting it, and one CS went to the Witch Dog there. I think the other one to the Scarab Mage, and the other one just to the creeps. So that pole only secured that the creeps are under the tower. That's pretty much it. Oh, Ohio, already fairly aggressive against the Titan. He went for yeah both, but. I think he used either Impay or Mana Burn before that, I'm not quite sure, but he's going for the right clicks here, but as soon as the Anchor Smash is coming out, then there's nothing, of course, for him to do, because the damage is just insanely reduced. You only have 53 as such, but look at the Mana Burn. Like Tight Hunter, he doesn't even have enough mana anymore for the Anchor Smash, and with that, oh, Ohio, they're going for the stun, the right clicks are coming out, but he doesn't have mana for anything else, and the Tight Hunter are all luring him in. But whoa, 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 that is pl playing on the edge. Yeah, I oh, think Ohio went a little top? bit. There's Ooh. our first blood on the Sky of Mage, and now they even want to turn it around. There is another Elder Shock, and they get the double kill on it. Yeah, I mean, KYX was leap in the end, wasn't even necessary, oh, but. Look, in the mid as well. Like, these plays here, but he's gonna find. Mushi is gonna find the best rune in the situation. It's a regeneration rune, and now with this. The Tinker is in trouble here. He wants to get one more CS, but there is from the other side the Doom coming in and the stun hits and the chains. This is free for Team Moshi here. Holy crap, what a start for them, really. And all Just, three lanes, yeah. <laughs> you mean Ohio, he went a little bit too deep under the tower, so he took some harassment in return, so has to use some extra tangos. But even so, man, like you already mentioned as well, the mana burn, making it so the Tide Hunter really can't even use the Anchor Smash at all. They're literally at the moment just winning all three lanes, but I do like that there's smoke coming out from Kolya and Emma Stone. Yep. So they want to get some in return and they really need it as well because otherwise if Gigabyte just continue like this, I mean just this solo tinker actually might be in trouble as well. There's a counter smoke net, he's gonna come in, WTF though doesn't have a smoke and if he comes down the hill, he's gonna have vision of tinker, but now tinker he's gonna be in so much trouble, Mushi will get the searing chain, he's actually holding on to it, Shackles to pass the first one and and they didn't even need the searing chains at all. Yep, they do exactly what they need to do, shutting down the Tinker as much as they can, and they do this quite decently. So, like, I guess Mushi was like, hey guys, why why we lost this game to 
and now they, they started to play series. Of course, also a bit luck and RNG involved sometimes here and there, but overall, just a good execution so far coming out, and the smokes also much more effective. The rotation's much more effective. The timing oh was perfect. Tide Hunter, Spike Carapace for the one anchors, my shackles to follow up as well. Ohio has a level 2 impale. They should have enough with the right clicks, and indeed they do. Yep, that is. I mean, so far there's action on all three lanes. Um, like those first three kills, I was so glad I got them all on camera because they were all slightly, <laughs> I don't know, shifted by one second. I'm glad I didn't uh, like execute that all at the same time, but still, 5-0 at the moment here. Team Mushi couldn't start better in this game. Let's see if the interactive Philippines somehow get back on this, but also like dominating now the runes and more rotations to come. Net, as I said, like he is... Uh, so aggressive, but now there's support behind the Tinker. And with Net being there, he might get caught out. That is bad news for him. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's epic bait that I went on to Jay actually. Net, if he goes in now, he's in so much trouble. He's in three as well. Ooh, we have vision. Concussion shot comes out. Arcane bolts flying, but Mushi, he wants to come in and help actually. Flame guard activity. WTF. He's on his way. Same thing. On to two. Ether shock to fall on. Emma Stone, he's gonna go down, or he's actually somehow still alive. The voodoo restoration just is enough heal, but WTF does clean him up. Yep, Man. the Scorched Earth getting that kill here, gladly. Otherwise, this this really looked like, oh my god, it's gonna be a double kill for Mushi, but then somehow, with the laser, no right clicks following, and uh, WTF was a bit too far away, but yeah, with the level 2 Scorched Earth, it just worked. And this is also like a really weird playstyle of a Doom. I mean, a Doom who is most of the time in the jungle, but coming in for rotations, that's very interesting, but Mushi, they want to get the Tides Hunter here, and look at it, they're gonna be successful with this. I mean, this is gonna be so easy, crack and shell or not. It's only level one as well. They're even using the fire remnants for extra damage by Mushi. Yeah, but because he wants seven to go back zero anyway. five minutes in, man. Yep, they want to go back for saying uh, for the base anyway. So he might as well just use. He just used one remnant, so he still, if he wants to, he can use another remnant. I think he did it. Yes, he used the remnant, so he can come back immediately once his bottle is full in the base. Uh, top, I'm waiting till the Brewmaster is level 6 because I think then he might try something on KYXY, but... Oh, on to Ohio! He has the Vendetta! Do they have any vision? Yes, they have the Dust, Ohio! He's slowed down, stunned up as well. He's probably gonna go down, maybe gets the counter, kill even one more right-click, and Mushi comes in as well to help. Searing Chains onto 2. Flame Guard, of course, already activated. Doesn't want to tank up too much physical damage, though. There's the Ravage as well! They're actually gonna get the kill on Mushi, the silence up, one more right-click. Is he gonna be fast enough? No, he's not. I can't even Double. believe that. That was a bit too ballsy by Mushi. He thought, but did he have a remnant somewhere in the background? I thought he has some some sort of escape, but in the end, I think he should have been satisfied with the kill on the witch dog. But this way, they give give away Ohio Ohio's death as well as Mushi, who just came back from the fountain. So he lost quite some XP, and even more important, the razor, uh, the razor, I say, the tinker in the mid. Uh, he gets farm now. Now that Mushi left the lane, I mean, sure, he got one kill here, went back to the base, now died as well. It gave the Tinker at least something. He is now soon level 6 with the next creep, but, but still. Oh, bottom! They want to go here on Emma Stone. Ohio actually open on him, but... Oh, the Brewmaster coming in. There's the slow escape. Uh, the Carapace is slowing them down, and now it's all about the next gush. The next gush should do the trick. There it is. Slowing them down. Next Thunderclap in two seconds. Oh, but... Oh, he didn't, he interrupted it. I can't believe it, but the dust, the dust, he what? wanted to go for Emma Stone. They were smelling it. They were like, ah, Ohio, that sneaky little son of a gun. He is going for Emma Stone. So I thought this is a huge mistake by the Brewmaster not going for the Thunderclap, but in the end, they guessed right. They guessed right, and it, he was going for Emma Stone there. Yeah, but actually, Mushi got the kill into the Tinker in the mid lane at the same time. I do believe Net wrote it in on the Shadow Shaman to help out. So it was a one for one. And of course, Interactive Philippines using some TPs to go in. Fox now in the bottom lane. And actually, I meant to ask this earlier already, but what do you think of the Brewmaster going for power threads? Well, usually we see the Brewmaster like being interested in like staying on lane, farming the dagger, going for arcane boots, just to make sure he always has this spammable, uh, spammable thingy. Say thunderclap out, as well as like coming out of the ultimate using the arcane boots right away to have enough to. Uh, do an additional Thunderclap. This way, I guess he's having some more studs. Not too bad, but oh, the Tinker! He wanted to go for the rune, but now he's hexed the chains, and the rest is just... yeah. <laughs> it's just the normal thing to happen there. This this game is just kind of snowballing completely. I mean, 10 to 3, 8 minutes in. They're probably not done yet. Mushi, he has... actually, he's out of remnants for the time being. But even without those, they want to get the kill on Tidehunter. Ravage though, he's gonna come off cooldown in 3 seconds. 
So they might be able to turn it around. Brumas tries to prime a split as well. He has a TP already gonna come in. Mushi, is this an epic wait or what? Oh, the arrow lines in the box are doomed up immediately. The Ravage is there. But it's not gonna save the Brewmaster. They're gonna get the Shackles onto the Tide Hunter as well. I mean, this arrow just set up everything and yep. he even got war trapped during it. It's not just the arrow, it's like the Brewmaster TPing there pretty much in front of three people and he knows that Doom is there. Easy go. And this is also the first tier one tower to fall with two kills as the cherry on top of the cake here. That is yeah, you were talking about a snowball. I like so far with the with some initiative coming out by interactive philippines i wouldn't have called it snowball yet but now with that tower and even more to come and all these follow-up roams which are coming now for example with the next assassin but he's running directly into a sentry ward now that he saw the creeps he was like oh my god they see me they see me so he's like panicking and just going back which is obviously the right decision because otherwise there might be a silence by the sky of mage and then the burst of the tinker is not really existent yet because four points or three points actually martial machines the tinker is completely under leveled like you you couldn't express it in, in other words there because level six nine minutes in almost ten minutes in that's just bad news yeah and to be honest just having nix assassin forcing the enemy supports to go for so much detection it hurts their economy so damn much i mean yes both of them actually are carrying sentries at the moment but i mean they need arcane boots for example but they want to go in mushi actually he's there in the middle three enemy heroes silence onto ohio as well they get the cash, but Mushi is somehow still alive. They have sentries down, actually double of them. But Mushi, can he escape this remnant? Yes, he's back to safety. It's a 4v4, actually 5v4. Shackles onto Fox as well. I'm not sure if they have enough. And yep, the premise, but it comes out in the end. Net slow down. Mushi gonna get taken out as well. I think just Mushi is team Mushi. They stayed a little bit too long net now. Gonna get maybe taken out as well. Yes, the Brulings. They are enough. Slow down onto WTF. Some Arcane Balls flying. Another sentry. And 3.0 buyback. buyback on net? What? Silence up immediately though, he's gonna go down Fox, he gets stunned, but the gosh is enough, and now KOX, but he's on the run with the haste rune, paralyzing cask actually, they need a little bit more the right clicks, <gasps> this was just 3 to 2 epic throw mode. Yeah, this was 3 to 2 epic throw mode, Ohio losing now his vendetta, and the buyback on net, this hurt them so much. This hurt them so much, but oh, look, the Impey and Emma Stone, you're in a very awkward position there with the chains. Yes, he has to pay for this insolence. He is staying for so long. Ohio making a good play there. At least they get one in return. But overall, this was a big throw by Team Mushi here that they were too confident that they could get it through. And just as a reminder, this was without Ravage. Like, if they had a Ravage here, this would have been even more of a secure fight for the interactive Philippines here. But they even without all that, they just made sure that it's, it's all coming out. And I want to wait another 30 seconds or so till the crafts update. But I'm pretty sure we see a nice lead by uh, Team Mushi. But after this fight, it's going to take a huge turn in the other direction. Because this was just too much, at least experience-wise. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely was. I also want to just take a look at the graphs when it updates. But still, even with that fight, the Tinker is so far from his foods of travels actually. And Zero chains up now, never mind, they're not gonna follow up. But with that fight, Skyrim Mage is level 6 now, as the Mystic Flare. But man, 12 minutes in Tinker not having foods of travels. I think last game, the Tinker had them like 8 minutes in. Of course, without the Soul Ring, but even so. Yeah. At least uh, Team Mushi is getting another tower here and uh, the Shaman is actually getting taking credit for it. Oh, Mushi just being slowed. And from the other side, there is a Titan to here. Oh, and he's using it, getting towards the others. But oh, look at the Silence Mystic Flare, everything coming out. Mushi is dying here. And yeah, that was a really bad idea. At least at the same time, KY Expert is trying to do some split push here, trying to get some pressure up so the interactive Philippines, they don't move forward. And I think it's time to look at the graphs and there we see it. Like all the time, Team Mushi here had like a 5k lead. And after this fight, it's like a 2.5 or even 3k experience drop immediately right after the fight. Gold-wise, it's not that much, obviously, because the tower didn't, uh, didn't go down there still. Like, there is a cliff now available, only for for the Dire team here, for Team Mushi, so they might actually continue with the split push, because they say like, hey guys, tier 2 for tier 1, that's the best we can do at this point. Yeah, it's, me. it's not a good trade, of course, for Interactive Philippines, but like you said, it might be their best option at the moment. They definitely have to turtle it out a little bit, hope for the Tinker to get this boost of travels, and from there on, maybe, just maybe... Oh, in the mid, the Hex, he on a Titan, the other shock, but... 
I don't think that's a good idea to go on. There is Potem ultimate and Mushi. He has a remnant, I guess, somewhere. Otherwise, he wouldn't be that aggressive. But oh, Panda ultimate coming out. And they have vision on net. But they want to go for Mushi here. They need more detection. But they don't have it. So this way, they're just getting the hell out of this out of here. And of course, the Panda ultimate they're is pretty much wasted. They're camping the room, <laughs> Once the Panda ultimate ends, he might get taken out. Oh, is he going to be safe? Yes, he gets the blink out. But still, Parallel and Gask actually bounce in between W2 F and KYX by Mushi. He goes in those here, he's on to do the death portal. He's completely wrecking Mushi so far. They need something to stop it. Anything at all, WTF. Oh, he's on the enough. run. He goes down and Koilia. One more drag, like Mudo <laughs> Restoration? No, no, he goes down as well. <laughs> oh my god. But man, that ultimate. I mean, Doom got the Titan to kill because he got Doom there. That's the residual kill. And oh, they want to go even for more. Is there any cast, anything at all? There is an arrow flying, but they dodge it. Mushi really wants this. Another remnant forward, and oh, he gets it. And the change as well on the Tinker. This is a double kill. <laughs> this is this is Mushi. This time his dive was actually worth it. Before that, he was kind of too confident, but with this one, it's four down, and that only for the price of two. Yeah, man, that fight was just. Pretty damn good to be honest for Team Mushi, and the only saving grace for Interactive Philippines was just Kolya on the Witch Doctor. That death ward literally he got the full duration channel off. Yeah, it's and he's so he's sick. rushing uh, Aganam Scepter here. Like just imagine if that would have been like Aganam Scepter death ward. Ouch, really ouch. But it was only a level one death ward. Unfortunately for Team Mushi, otherwise they would have lost even more. But well, the Doom. He kind of he was relying that like his team has some sort of interrupt, any interrupt. But the problem is Ohio didn't have the impale. Arrow was already out, and he himself didn't have any mana for it. Like he had ensnare, or actually he had he had the war stomp back then. But I think it was either on cooldown or he just didn't have mana anymore. Oh, but Mushi, Mushi. what is Mushi doing what? here against two? That's a bad idea. There's a haste rune though, so actually the Ravage comes out as well, but the Mystic Flare was already used. If they only had used those two spells, and actually Arrow into the Titan as well, Mushi is still alive. Can he actually make it out? Your Keen Bolts are following, I think he's gonna be safe, but Hex onto the Titan. In the meantime, yeah, there's Shock to follow up as well. Even the Master Bit was deployed for that. Oh, oh Doom! Doom onto Broom after the Impale from Ohio onto two heroes. The Death Ward is there, I don't think it's gonna be enough. Searing Chains catches it almost immediately, and Mushi in other silence, but Arrow will catch Emma Stone and Koila, well, he's just gonna get chased down by two heroes. Wow. That that was such a bad idea. That was such a bad idea by the interactive Philippines to actually try to get Mushi down with the haste rune. Like he got both of them. I mean, casket was out, the seal was out. He has a haste rune, and they even committed the ravage for it. The ravage they needed now, pretty much. That was a bad, bad idea. And with that, of course, Team Mushi they can just go for even more. Yeah, we must have saw the ravage just being popped, only hitting Mushi there. It's like. Guys, we can team fight so easily, even though they don't have a mech or anything. And of course, just getting the Doom on the Brewmaster, making it so that the Primal Split doesn't even come out. <laughs> and man, Net, 16 minutes in, has a Blink Dagger. Link and Sphere finished on KYXY. They are just so damn fat. 10k gold lead, XP also 10k almost. Is there a comeback? I mean, Interactive Philippines, they can definitely turtle. Like I said, there's no mech, no pipe oh, inside either. Oh, there's a go here on Mushi. He just came back here. They need... Oh, the casket. The casket bouncing here might be actually interesting. And yes, Mushi is going down with a blink of Fox here. This is too much damage. Mushi just came back from the fountain. He TP'd out. So that's 135 gold down. His double damage rune, well, it's still in the bottle. He didn't use it. So, yeah, that's a 35 seconds out for Mushi. And oh, they might even go for more KYXY. Well, Lincoln's Fear Rush... I don't like the Lincoln's Fear Rush, but sure, why not? You have to fear a lot of things, like the seal of the Sky of Mage, for example, taken down. But on the other, s on the other hand, the problem is that they have too many things to actually remove the Lincoln's Fear. That's what I'm mostly scared about. I mean, Sky of Mage can remove it easily. We have um, the Witch Dog who can remove it with one of his spells. We have the Brewmaster with Haze who can remove it. That's a bit too much removal on a Lincoln's Fear. But now, Mune Shadow, Doom on the Panda, and no, they start. Yeah, the Impale is there on Fox as well. Actually, the Paralyzing guy is doing a lot of work, but Kolya is gonna go down. No Death Ward this time around, actually. Not a safe one, and Master Pet Wars. They catch J, he's completely boxed off. He goes down 3 for 1 so far. Can they get more Emma Stone? Searing Chains up. The Ravage actually is there from the Tide Hunter, but he's alone. What's the point of actually using and wasting oh, the Ravage yeah. like that? It's the second time. To be honest, it's the second time I just don't understand. Like, this fight was obviously lost, but he was hoping that he gets some sort of anything up here ravage into maybe the two kills one on Ohio and the other one uh, there on the Mirana but no it it just didn't work 
that Ravage is a second time being out. And to be honest, Ravage is not a, 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 a ultimate you can, I don't know, handle that lightly. It's 150 seconds. They used it once for Mushi. It completely failed. And what happened? Uh, a team wipe was following up. Now again, like they didn't have it for this fight, but they still wanted to fight. And in the end, he's using the Ravage after the fight was lost. I think this is a bad, bad decision, especially now. In the mid, they don't have to fear anything. And you look, look how ballsy they are. They go in. They get the stuns and take the Mystic player. He's actually soaked up by two heroes. At least this time around, the Primal Speed did come out, but Kolya with the death for the Shimushi might go down. No, he gets the Remnant out. No silence, but WTF. I think he's the casualty of war. Boulder tossed up. Yeah, he's gonna go down for sure. Silence is there as well. Man, finally they get something in return. Actually, they get two kills, so... Yep. With the initiation, I thought the Tinker is gonna die immediately. He survived somehow, and they finally get a favorable exchange. Yep, this, this, this is what they need, because like the last two fights... I mean, this this one excluded here. The last two fights were just horrible. Just horrible for the interactive Philippines. These are not fights you want to give. They they boosted like 10, 10 deaths <laughs> or 10 kills rather for, for Team Mushi. And now they have to somehow recover from that. But oh, Nat here, he's being slowed but before the concussive shot comes in. But Mushi <laughs> coming in this side and then saying, okay, oh, let's see what I want to do here. He's playing a crazy style Ember. Like usually we see Embers like being so passive for I don't know a long duration of the game, but here he is just going nuts, so aggressive. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, I think it's the most aggressive Ember spirit I've seen for a long while at the moment. Yep. But That's thanks refreshing. to that, actually, <laughs> he well, he's not as far away from his battle fury as I thought. He has the perseverance, so just needs the claymore now. But still, it's like 1.2k gold. And 20 minutes in, usually, if an Ember Spirit has a good game, they already have it by this time. But Fox, he might be in trouble. Oh, yeah, he's gonna come in from behind. The sentry was there, but Fox's reaction wasn't fast enough. Doomed up, just in case. Should be an easy kill, Net blinks in and takes yep. it for himself. Easy one there. And oh, they might even get more here. Oh, Emma Stone is getting the walls directly on top of his head. But a Mystic Claire doing at least some damage. And now again, Death Ward doing full channels here. And oh, WTF, he's the one. The first victim and they go even for Mushi, so in the end it's a 2-2 trade. This is definitely nice and now let's see if Ohio wants to do some sort of turnaround. Net doesn't have more but he can come in for at least uh, at the shock but it doesn't seem like it. It's more or less a standoff. But still, like, they do a good job here and now the Tinker at the same time of course trying to do some split push here. Yep, he's having his uh, blink dagger. So let's see what's happening here. In the They're hanging around for a long while. Ohio of course missed the last impale completely. But they want to go for it. Blink Hex comes out first. KYX so even goes in with an aggressive leap. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know why he didn't plank out there. I, he had the plank if he wanted to. He because he saw he saw Ohio here. Like Ohio was coming from this direction, and he this is the range of the Sentry Ward. And in the meantime, I've even missed that kill here on KYXY. KYXY getting the knight on the tower, but the Tinker is getting the Mirana right after. So KYXY. That is bad news, of course. The Lincolns did not save you there. Yeah, but the Tinker, even with that kill, he is still so underfarmed for this point in the game. I mean, he has 1.8k in the bank, but do you think he's still just going for that Dagon rush, or is he going for something else, like getting straight up Hex maybe for this game? No, I think Dagon is still the way to go here. Like, even even though you play against like quite tanky heroes that have like Lincolns and flame guard and whatnot but I still I still think that the traditional build is, is the way to go I mean you can burst down net you can burst down even the Nyx assassin after his carapace it should be fine but it's of course a lot harder than last game for example last game you had like blunt targets like a silencer for example someone who can't do anything against you there with even a low HP pool here it's a bit harder obviously because we have some absorb for them the linkage fear making it harder carapace making it harder and of also targets with a lot of region and a lot of escapability because remnants, leaps, blinks. But let's see. I still think it's it's a it's a good choice. By the way, have a look at the sentry wards. Like I don't even know how many. This is one, two, three, four, five. I think there's like six at the moment yeah, on the map. Six six sentry wards just to make sure that Ohio doesn't get the opening. But to rest at the moment, I have to say that for Interactive Philippines, Kolya on the Witch Doctor, he, he's the one that has been mostly just keeping them in the game. 
those death wards is level 2 now as well. He's only 300 gold short of his Agony Scepter. So with the Dagon Scepter level 2 ultimate, if he can get a full time channel again, which definitely shouldn't happen considering the amount of lockdowns. Actually Mushi might be in trouble, no the silence isn't there. Yeah, but... that concussive shot is still following him like it's the longest I've ever seen. Zzz, there we go. But yeah, the tower, well... Wait, was that tier 2 tower already down? Yeah, it was already down with the with the split push they had, sorry. Like, I'm, I'm sleeping, I was like, oh, I, th I still thought there was a tower left, but either way. They just pushed him off. It's 18 and 30. Like, I mean, Team the Dire side here is still having a distinct advantage. 10k is not going to be better with uh, the Roshan for the interactive Philippines. The question is do they contest? I mean, they smoke up. We have a Plink Ravage, and that could open. I mean, Plink Ravage, Plink Thunderclap, that might be interesting, but the Roshan is already dead. And oh my god, they come in. Not instant doom on the Panda. That would have made the fight, but. This way, okay, they're like, sure, Roshan is done, we have to work against the ages of all, but that arrow! Oh, Emma Stone, <laughs> on the edge. Wait, wait, who do you think is scarier in the fight? Tidehunter or a Brewmaster, like Ravage or Primal Split? Both, together, that's the scary thing. No, but the uh, well-placed Ravage with the follow-up should be better than the Panda, because right now, the Panda, I don't know, he can disable only like two targets, but his damage is fairly limited. Oh, Mushi actually gets the series. He's oh, he goes in balls deep. They get the stun on Tinker. But Koida, is he gonna go down? No, the Ravage comes out. Mystic player as well. They get the two kills. This Ravage was just absolutely spot on. Yes, that was exactly what I was referring to. This both at the same time. This is Ravage instant going for. Oh, Mushi, does he have a remnant somewhere else? No, he does not. If he gets the silence, oh, he gets the silence and he's going down. This is his ages, and now the question is do they have more? A stun, immediate stun, but no. Oh, he's using it, and oh my god, he's out of vision. Koya, eat that, <laughs> eat that arrow, and oh my god. <laughs> at least they get this one, and Mushi even might want to turn this around, at least on Emma Stone. Yeah, it should be an easy kill on the Skyrim. I mean, he's fast enough, maybe at KOX. We're gonna be able to chase him down. The right click's coming in, and they get the kill now, Fox. Is he on the safe side? Nope, Blink Hex from Net. He has the shackles as well. But Che, oh, that just damage. Take on level 1, of course, helping out. But Fox, a few more right clicks, KOA XY. Star Storm, no, it's not taking the last right click, though. Oh, it's not gonna do it. Oh, that's too bad. That's bad news. But oh, is there another anything? A laser is there, but Lincoln Sphere. Lincoln Sphere. 100% <laughs> value item. <laughs> but did meet them? Oh. change the Toy as well. The arrow will be a little bit off target, though. But the flame guard with the right clicks for Mirana might be enough. Ohio, it's not gonna come in, but actually they might get chased. Searing chains into the impale. The death ward is bouncing through, though. Will it be enough? Don't think so. Everybody's backing off. Ohio, blink, still on cooldown. We're for another five seconds. Anchor smash. Oh, one oh, hit. He's dead. One hit. He's not. He's not. He'll blink. blink. <gasps> but the tower. Tight blink. Blink. Oh, he blinks a little bit. No, target. Oh, he's there. Find he him. finds him. Oh, oh just... spiker up is no mystic player. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh. a chase. That was. I thought he blinked. Uh, he didn't blink correctly in that little pocket you have here behind the trees, but eventually he did it. But what a fall from back here. Those fights are so trolly at the moment, like, so... Oh my god. <laughs> well, Radiant's courier just got killed. It only had a TP on it, thank god, but... Brewmaster has his Agony Scepter, but Monkey King Bar is there on Mirana, so... Yeah, that's the best item to go for. I was expecting this when we saw the Demon Edge already coming out by the Mirana. But yeah, against Fox. I mean, Fox was pretty unlucky because um, it was quite a while since he got the last uh, right click there on him and he was already behind the tower where KRX got his last hit, but... Yeah, he managed to, like, not miss this one. Usually it's like, when I, when I would shoot, like, make a right click on a Panda, I would always miss, but in this... In this scenario, KYXY just beating the odds, but oh, Tinker, he's blanking out. He, I, wow, Mushi was going for it. He's even using the rest of his remnants just to find the Tinker here, but no, he did not manage it. Yeah, a little bit unlucky, but it's not like they lost too much themselves. Just have to wait a little bit for the remnants to cool off now. But they want to go for the Doom. They want to go for that doom. Yes, there we go. Ultimate being used. Now, that will be the bullet toss. The question is, is there stun? Yeah, the Gush is there. Can he go out? Like, still no Scorched Earth used, and that, of course, might be a bad idea for him. Now, BKB, it just came on the Courier. I can't even believe this. This BKB is just a second old. He just uses it right away. Bottom ulti, helping them, and they might actually turn it around. But, oh, nice blink here by Fox. There might be still an arrow. 
Catching up. Once they see which direction he goes. Oh, hi -oh. He's going to meet up with him. The blink. It's disabled by the Scorch. Of just barely. Shackles to follow. You don't even need to do him in the end. Yep. So Easy going. Just that was very unlucky for the interactive Philippines here. I mean, besides the not having enough burst damage to get that Doom down, because he's just too tanky already, plus the fact that he just received that damn BKB in the fight. Like, one second on... <laughs> By the way, ju just before the BKB got delivered, KOAX, well, he actually came in and activated the Lincoln from the Doomringer. Yeah. I I'm not too sure which spell it actually blocked, but... It, it was got a shot, shot, I think. I'm not... 100% sure, but he also dodged nicely the Mystic Flare, so overall it was was a good play and a bit uh, nice RNG there as well, or good timing, let's call it like this. But yeah, like this should have been a kill, it should have been much faster, this way it failed, Doom surviving, Panda going down, that's of course bad news. And yeah, actually Tinker now, Mushi does get some damage in, but there's still a TP, I mean, this Tinker should be safe. If the Mushi... Jinx didn't hit. Oh, but why are they resuming? The Witch Dog is resuming the game. That's the funny part. And then After disconnected himself. Yeah, that's that's the funny part. Skyrim <laughs> is disconnecting. Witch Dog is like, ah, we just, <laughs> we just resume. <laughs> He's disconnecting himself. The Titan took following them. I guess in the Philippines, the Internet Cafe just shut down service. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, no. All no. five. Oh, five gone. <laughs> this is bad news. This is so bad we news. We can actually take a look at the graph now as we post anyway. It used to be like a 12k lead for both gold and XP for a pretty long time, to be honest. So, Interactive Philippines, they had kind of stabilized. But now, finally, with some good fights, it's about 17,000 in gold for Team Mushi and the same in XP as well. So, finally, they are just climbing ahead again. Yeah, it's... I mean, there was like a, a, like a little... I don't know, a dry spell for about 10 minutes, that was by when the interactive Philippines made here and there some nice plays. But overall, it's just, yeah, Mushi, or Team Mushi is now doing the better plays and the better trades overall. And like you see, they, they try to show initiative. I mean, this go on the Doom, it could have been so successful, you know, going in, getting the kill, going out, that's how it should be. But the problem is, like, there's sometimes it just should not be or shall not be and. uh yeah, this is bad news for an interactive Philippines. Also, net worth. I mean, you see the three important heroes for Team Mushi. They are leading. And the Tinker is the only one who's keeping up with it. I mean, that's the Tinker is really what, what they can hope for. We have a Dagon 2, but the go for, for example, uh, um, a Thera play, that will take a long time because he got just 1.6k. That means we have a Ghost Scepter if he wants to right now, or if he wants to upgrade the Dagon, that is also another option, but I think the Ethereal Blade against Mushi might be uh, a good thing to happen. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know, it's like till he gets that Ethereal Blade and actually can do some nice damage, It's it will take a while. Another maybe even 5, 6, 7, up to 10 minutes if he gets shut down in between. Yeah, it's, I mean just... To be honest, this game, from the draft, or from the ending of the draft, I already pointed it out that they are relying so heavily on the Tinker. And I guess Team Mushi, they knew it as well, because they ganked this Tinker pretty often early on. And Interactive Philippines, maybe it would have been better to just have the Tinker like safe lane farming in a tri lane or something like that. Mm -hmm. Although they did use an aggressive tri lane, so... But it just didn't work out in the end, or at least so far hasn't worked out, I guess. No, it's just not working out at the moment, and well, we have to see, because uh, so far there's uh, no n notification of anyone, like maybe the Mineski guys know, ah, look at it, I think internet is back on the Philippines, there we go, finally. Yeah, I mean, thank God, this is <laughs> All not taking time. longer. At least, fingers crossed. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> maybe, maybe so someone tripped over the cable. You never know. Maybe we blame here, like, like the internet or uh, internet cafe or something. But it's not even the case. Maybe just someone, I don't know, just tripped over the cable and that's it. Maybe it was even electricity. But then it would have taken longer to just reboot your computer, I guess. <laughs> what yeah, really? you, you Bobo? Also, what is what does Bobo mean? <laughs> I have no clue. This is no clue at all. Something we don't understand. I, I I'm not too sure if if we're lucky 
not to understand that word, depending on what the nature of that word is. Okay, maybe it means something with M. I, I bet M that when and the stream Uka. reaches this point, the chat is going to be like, how, how do you not know Bobo? How do you not know Bobo? Man, Bobo. You know, Bobo is like, I don't know, to me, Bobo sounds like a... Hobo? <laughs> I don't know how it sounds to me. It sounds like some some children's funny name for a pet oh, or something. Bobo. It's like, hey Bobo. 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 It's like a bear. Bobo. Yeah, Bobo the bear. <laughs> We're talking probably total bullshit, and it means like motherfucker or whatever. It's just in the language. <laughs> <sighs> well, I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna further with, go further with this. This is a bad idea. Either way, the Titan is the one who's still not reconnecting, so let's see when he's coming back. And they're also gonna take at least some seconds to analyze their situation, because um, the Tinker is now, okay, did he just use his sleight of fist? And yes, he did. Maybe he saw that, or maybe the disconnect came out there as well. In theory, the Tinker should be able to TP out here. In theory, at least. Yeah, just watch the machines, rearm, blink TP, or just TP straight out. Also possible, but look at Ohio. He's on the hunt once again. Scarf Mage might be an easy target for him if he just gets the right click. I mean, it's a level three even that after all. And the Titanator himself looks like he's going for a straight up refresher orb. Yeah, Oblivion stuff already there. Thousand two hundred. Sure, why not? Like he's also having soon the level three. Uh, Ravage, now that it makes a difference, it's like just a, a small stun game, but yep, we're going back in the game. Oh, he's actually TPing out, but yeah, Mushi's not gonna get him. He was trying, I guess it was worth trying, but Ohio in the mid already looking for something, but he does not really have a follow up except for KYXY there. But yeah, they don't have sentries anymore. Like the sentries they spend at the start, bad idea, but Ohio, oh, he's going for it, but nah, this one, this one just didn't hit. I mean, the arrow follow-up was completely off as well. No, like this. No, this Kick. this arrow follow-up was was not off. He was relying on the target being stunned by Impale, like he was just relying on his teammate. But since the Impale didn't hit, like he was not aiming for what happened after. He was aiming for what happens if it's uh, the thingy. But wow, this arrow on KYX, I did not understand this one. But either way, the Tinker here, he should be happy that he did escape this one but he has to be careful though like man you should TP the hell out of here Human I'm a little bit surprised he just didn't try to blink into the trees but then again if he blinks into the trees and doesn't fight the Tinker he would have been just in the march of the machines after oh look at this Mushi's illusion they're doing some dewarding here that's of course bad news for the Skyraph mate it's 100 gold down the train oh well but at the moment it seems like that uh, Team Mushi is like okay holding back a bit because they know they have an advantage in both XP and gold and also in the initiative map positioning, map vision as such even though um, they're regaining a bit more. Now with the Tinker also being present but the Tinker, I don't know, this is... Oh, oh. they find the Titan they get Hex but Net actually Hex <laughs> and Blink out. It's like, they were no. expecting the entire team to be there I think. Yep. He was like, nah, nah, this is, this is too hot. I'm not touching this one. That's like... Just Hex making sure I'm getting the hell out of here and that's that's pretty much it. So well, let's see. We have Ohio roaming in an area where there's no there are no sentries whatsoever and it there might be Mushi following up. And Mushi going for an interesting build. A Yasha is coming out. So I think he's going. Said, oh do they find oh, Tinker the spike Tinker. Carapace is there to the stun up and Chupin easy kill slight of fist comes through. Yeah. That's what they have been waiting for all the time. Like three people top waiting for him and two people bottom waiting for him. And Nyx is S and he's going for a BKB as well by the way. And Mushi, oh there's a go here on Mushi. He's being silenced but oh god the flare completely off. But oh my god, Koya. Koya got interrupted by the Nyx Assassins by Carapace, otherwise this would have just channeled it through. Either way, they still get the kill on Mushi but wow, that was a good Carapace. Yeah, I mean... Probably not making a difference because Mushi did die, but oh, actually, <laughs> he stops the blink or TP rather from Fox. Oh god, like, like Ohio is such a nuisance. Like, you can't even TP out safely against him. Man, <laughs> this Nyx Assassin on Ohio, he's been playing so well, but mid lane Tidehunter might be in trouble KYX boy. No, he gets the blink out and TP almost immediately. Yep. That would have been net in the area, but no. 
he just came a bit too late for a hex there. Either way, it is a Tinker kill for a Mushy kill. I guess that's sort of worth it. I mean, Tinker is back now. He can start pushing out the lanes again. The question is what Team Mushy, what are they doing? I mean, they know this is the all deciding game. And Mushy is handing out $500 if a team beats Team Mushy. That is quite some money. Money you can get for one best of three. That is decent. I say. I mean, other tournaments, there's like a thousand prize pool, thousand five hundred. I mean, smaller tournaments, and you have to play like qualifiers and playoffs and finals and semis and whatnot. Here, it's only a best of three, and you get five hundred directly on your hand, in your pocket. So it's definitely worth it to really fight for it, even till the last, the very last minute, pretty much. And well, at the moment, it seems like they are just holding on. Both teams. First of all, Mushi is making sure that this is going to be a win. That's why they're holding back and not going aggressive. Because they also know, hey, there's now all the cooldowns waiting. Titanta with Ravage, etc, etc. But also the, the Philippine knows they're like, hey guys, we need to get our Tinker a bit more fat. Oh, so let's see. But they're going to run into smoke breaks and Blink out for Hoyo, but Blink Ravage only what you want to. You get the Mystic Fear, arrow fall off, WTF is going to come in too much to Titan. Actually, maybe a little bit of a mistake, but KYX with his PKB, Koilia going to get hexed up. No death ward for him. Master Fit Wars a little bit too late, but they get the shackles on the Tinker, and that's the most important kill. And Mustone gets out, but I think Brewmaster might be in trouble as well. Vendetta from Ohio. Can he get the blink when the split ends? Actually, he can. But no TP on him. Oh, Net is trying. Now they have the vision. They hex him, but I don't know. Do they have any follow up? Okay, oh, KYX is jumping in there. Like, let's all just be in the trees and. Oh, Fox is going down. So, in the end, this is a 4 for 0 trade. Only Emma Stone made it alive out of here, or did he die as well? No, no, he Emma, he got the TP out. Uh, but yeah, this was well. The BKB on Ohio made the difference here because Ohio would have died if he would have gotten the full ticks of the Mystic Flare. And well, what else is there to say? Mushi, I don't know what Mushi is doing. Look at this, like <laughs> he's using his new newly acquired Manta, just getting the creep wave pushed out in two lanes. That is and. Yeah, he's already starting on the tower, because he can, because he's mushy. I don't know, he's, I like his plays today, he's, he's ballsy. He pays often for it, it's not like he's in, invulnerable or anything. He often dies, but, well, he also gives like the, the team like the energy, he's like, hey guys, come on, go, push. I mean, they got the tier 3, but everybody is, or almost everybody was alive, so they're backing off. They're going to take Roshan now, I guess, and then maybe go for the deciding kind of push. They just have so many BKBs for themselves at the moment. Actually, four of them. Mushi is the only one not to have one. So, four BKBs. They can definitely just easily stay in the fight if they want to. Yep, absolutely. And, well, they go for Roshan. This is the perfect transition. They just got four kills. They got a tier 3 tower. And now they go for Roshan. I think you couldn't execute it better, like, time-wise. And they, they're not even going to use, like, the Mass Serpent wards for it. Because I'm sure after this Roshan... They will just go and push. Use the Master Open Wards there as well. If they win that fight, the Master Open Wards will at least take care of at least one or two buildings. And uh, yeah, that's that's the key to win this. At the moment, they have the advantage and I don't think it's a good idea to hold back anymore. Because they have everything they need. Yeah, I mean, if it's 25k plus in gold and XP, it's like you're almost at the stage where it's unprobable. At least I think... The kind of lineup they themselves have, and it's just against the interactive Philippines, it's just a tinker. I even if he was six slotted, I'm not too sure that he would be able to stand up. Especially if the Doom just goes in, Doom and tinker, and I mean, look at the items coming out right now on the dire side. We have four BKBs. The only one who doesn't have a BKB is the one who holds the Aegis. So this double ravage, which is coming out by the way, pretty much soon, 400 gold for the Titan, and we have it. But what do you do with a double? Uh, Ravage if you have a team that has four BKBs and those BKBs are relatively fresh like fresh look at eight seconds We have probably nine seconds here on him KYX, but this should be completely fresh No, it's also they use it once but yeah, this is nuts Oh, arrow flying and oh actually connecting on Tinker and they go in there it is He's dying immediately as well as the Panda easy go now the death ward actually doing quite some damage But with the Moonlight Shadow Koya, yeah, he's also going down We have to look if we have buybacks because they have to use it, but no no buybacks for anyone Tinker has it only yeah Tinker has a buyback. What what can you do with this one? This is bad news. This is Rex for sure 
and everything, all the stars aligned here. Like this is a perfect initiation, the perfect target to stun, and also the double damage here on Mushi making the building damage now insane. They're not even using the buybacks. They're called a GG. They're like, we can't do anything. And the Titan is coming in, he's like, yeah! GG Ravage! GG Ravage! <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. It's not $500 for uh, the interactive Philippines, but they put up a hell of a fight, even took one game of Team Mushi here. So yeah, kudos to them. But yeah, Mushi definitely in a better shape here in game three. And guys, but that's not it. We have, in summary, three times a best of three. The next team we play uh, is Team Mushi versus Invasion here at 6 p.m. SGT, that is in our time 12 uh, As in now. CET, pretty much now. So we're just waiting a bit till the next lobby is up, and then we have a Team Mushi versus Invasion, so don't run away. My name is Heflamor, casting with me is Coucher. Of course, all the news and all the updates you always get on our uh, Twitter and Facebook at TV. That's it. We come for the next lobby in just some minutes, I hope.